Hello everyone. So we'll talk about our third and final abstract data type that uses an array-based list data structure, and that is the DEC, or double-ended queue. Oh, it's not DQ, it is a DEC. Um, and a DEC is actually, it's, it's kind of an esoteric little uh, ADT. It doesn't get used in a whole bunch of applications, but nonetheless, it still exists. And it's not too hard to understand what it is. Um, a deck is an ADT where addition and removal happens at both ends, right? And you can say that it essentially combines the behaviors of a stack and a queue. It has a notion of a front and a rear, um, just like a regular queue does, but you are allowed to add to the front, remove from the front, add to the rear, and remove from the rear. And that's it. But, you know, what differentiates this from a list? Uh, the differentiator is you can only operate at either end. You have more flexibility in what you do at either end, but it, the operations all happen at the end. You don't work in the middle. You can't get random elements out of the middle of this thing. Okay? Um, there are some uh, reasons for using this. Um, it's because uh, one area where you see it a lot is CPU process scheduling, right? So you have a whole bunch of processes that are running on your computers for all your different apps that you've got running right now, and your operating system decides who gets to go, right? And oftentimes, the operating system puts those things in a queue. All the apps that are running on your computer demand some processing power from your, your computer's brain, from the CPU, but your computer's brain can only handle one thing at a time. It can handle them very, very fast, about three billion times per second, um, but it can still only handle one at a time, and it's up to your operating system to determine which one of the hundreds of applications that are currently running right now actually get the, that valuable processor uh, attention. And CPU process scheduling, usually it happens in a queue, First come, first serve. But every once in a while, something really important comes along, and it needs to go first. It needs to go to the front of the queue. Um, and that's where you see a deck show up, right? Like if you hit Control-Alt-Delete on Windows, and you want that keyboard stuff to go through and uh, the stuff to pop up immediately, yeah, certain things have higher priority, okay? So decks exist. Um, but the good news is if you understand the concept of a queue, it's pretty easy. You have a front, you have a rear, you can add and remove from the rear, and you can add and remove from the front. That's it. The middle, we don't worry about. Um, so let's just make sure we understand conceptually what a deck is. Let me switch back over here to my whiteboard. Okay. So now we're looking at this page of the worksheet, the deck page on the worksheet, and let's walk through the operations. Um, it's going to look like a queue. Okay, the things that we do. So step one, we initialize kind of an empty deck, nothing there, right? Okay, step two, add to the rear, lion. Okay. Lion is gonna be the rear of the queue. Well, so, or the rear of the deck, excuse me. So just like a queue, a deck needs to have a notion of a front, and a rear. Okay. Now when there's only one item in a queue or a deck, the front and the rear are both that one single item. Okay. If the deck or the queue is empty, front and rear don't exist. Right? There's, there's kind of like an error state there if you try and access the front or the rear of an empty queue um, or deck. So when we add to the rear here, both the front and the rear are pointing to our in reference to this line. Okay. Same will be true if we added front here. Right? Okay? If there's one item in a queue or a deck, it is both the front and the rear. Okay, now deck step two. Oh, we just did step two, step three. We are going to add to the front, add front, bear. Now, add rear, add front, remove rear, remove front, those are all methods you will write in your deck class, um, how you, and you will implement them using a Python array-based list. So it's going to look a lot like your queue implementation, but with a couple of extra things. Um, 
All right, so we are adding to the front the bear. Okay, let me move my little step indicator a little bit. So let me put the bear in front. Okay, and we need to move the front here. Okay, so we've got the bear, then the lion, and the bear is the front, the lion is the rear. Okay, again, think of it like a line at a grocery store or a line to get on the airplane. Some people can go first and they get added to the front. They are specials, okay? Um, all right, S step four, adding to the rear, okay? So we're in line at the airport and the bear gets on the plane first, could get on the plane first, the lion gets on the plane next, and now comes the hog. Step four, add to the rear the hog. Okay. The hog goes at the end, and now, conceptually, the rear of this list is here. All right, we've just done step four. All right, step five, we remove from the front. Okay. Step five, can you really see this on the screen? Step five, we remove from the front. Okay, who's at the front? Well, conceptually, we've defined the front to be here, so the bear. We are gonna remove and return the bear. And when we remove from these data structures, we are usually returning them as well, okay? So remove and return. So the bear goes away. Who is now the front? The front is now the line. Okay. okay. Step six. Remove from the rear. Okay. Who is the rear conceptually? The rear is the hog. Okay. So the hog gets removed and returned. The hog is gone. He got tired of waiting in line, so he left. That can happen too went to get a drink. Who is now the rear of this deck? Well, there's only one element in it, and that's the lion, okay? So the front and the rear, you know, as you add front, as you add rear, as you remove from the front, remove from the rear, you just gotta know conceptually where's the front, where's the rear, and add or remove, you know, consistently from whatever location you specify, okay? That's about it. It's just a, a, a cue on steroids. Alright, let me briefly go back here to my slides. Okay? So, um, here's the big O's of these operations. And like we had, let me get rid of myself, like we had with the Q, um, it, when we use an array-based list as our data structure for implementing our deck data type, we have to make a choice in our list, our Python list. Where's the front? Where's the rear? Okay, is it the rear, is the front index zero and the rear index minus one? Or is the rear index zero and the front index minus one? It's up to you. You will pick. There's no right or wrong answer for a deck or a queue. You just have to pick one and use it consistently. And just like with the queue, you, some of your operations will be big O of 1, and some will be big O of n. Which ones are big O of 1 or n depend on whether you choose the front index 0 or index negative 1 as the front of the queue and the deck. Okay. So what, what's important here is that you understand why. When you have a data structure that's a Python array-based list, when you're picking one as the conceptual front or conceptual rear of a deck or a regular queue, you need to understand why one of those things working at one of those ends is big O of 1 versus big O of n. Okay? So convince yourself of why that is and make sure you understand it because you will definitely get questions about, like, what's the efficiency of Q dot NQ or deck dot remove rear when your data structure treats uh, 
index 0 in the Python list as the front. Right? What's it going to be? Is it big O1? Is it big O of n? you got to know it. And don't memorize it. Be able to figure it out based on what you know about array-based lists. That's the key. You've got to know the efficiency, the big O efficiency, of those array-based list functions. Everything else is going to follow from that. Okay? All right. So as I mentioned last time, I'll bring myself back for a minute. Q and deck operations. We care about adding and removing from these data structure, or these data types, excuse me. In these ADTs, abstract data types, one of these operations, adding or removing, must be big O of n because we use a Python list as our data structure. Must be. Must be the case because that's a limitation of the Python data structure. Okay? So, we could, though, make adding and removing from a queue, from both ends of a queue, um, big O of 1. But, we have to change. We cannot use a Python list internally. We have to take it up a notch. We got to implement our own data structure. And we will next time. So, uh, have a good look over these. You now hopefully have all the knowledge that you need to work on your next assignment where you're going to implement the stack, the queue, and the deck ADTs, and then you are going to write a little program that uses your stack to solve a problem. Um, let me know what questions you have, and I will see you next time.